I'm sure most of us remember in the beginning of the pandemic, the empty shelves of grocery stores, the three to four days wait for home deliveries, the long lines to get daily essentials. All of this added stress to our emotional well-being. And in the fear of unknown, people started buying large quantities of packed and long-lasting food. Now, you know, food has a long shelf life because of its high content of preservatives like salt, sugar, and often trans fats. All of these ingredients add increase of unhealthy weight gain and obesity. And due to boredom of sitting at home for months at a stretch, some people developed food cravings. Did that happen to anybody here? Or should I ask, did that not happen to anywhere here? The change in our lifestyle and eating habit during quarantine was significantly associated with unhealthy weight gain and obesity. In a scientific study done, it was shown that 22% of people who were quarantined gained 10 to 15 pounds. And unfortunately, I was one of them. Working from home, I found answers to my anxiety via cooking, eating, trying new recipes, and all of a sudden, I was a self-acclaimed master chef, a star baker. <laughs> but as soon as I was allowed to go back to my research laboratory, I realized I couldn't fit in any of my dresses or pants. So I decided to find a healthy weight loss diet. And what did I do? I went to Dr. Google. And to my surprise, I was completely overwhelmed by the number of weight loss diet options I found. The paleo diet, the keto diet, the Turkish diet, the Atkins diet, the zone diet, the SHG diet, the intermittent fasting diet, the alkaline diet. Oh, th there are more. <laughs> the GM diet, the cabbage diet, the calorie deficient diet. The list goes on and on. And still, the question persisted. What's the right diet for me? Most of these diets were actually developed for a specific need in a particular disease condition and not for weight loss. As for example, the keto diet was initially developed for apoplectic children because it reduces the activity levels in the brain. So the long-term use of keto diet can lead to headache, brain fog, decreased metabolic rate, and often kidney failure. Most of this diet also lead to eating disorders. During my search for a healthy weight loss diet, I also discovered some group of people known as social influencers, <laughs> who without any prior training or medical knowledge were sharing tricks to lose weight faster. I was astonished and scared at the power of social media and associated misinformation. But even when we researchers publish our research work in a peer-reviewed journal, the mainstream media and the social media can get their conclusion incorrect. A colleague of mine published an article last year indicating the role of dietary flavanols in reducing the risk of Alzheimer's dementia. <laughs> Interestingly, flavanols are found in abundance in red wine. So what did social media and mainstream media conclude? They say drink red wine to avoid getting Alzheimer's. I will tell you, it's not that simple. It's far from truth. All of this misinformations and fad diets makes it even harder to know what to eat to maintain good health, let alone for healthy weight loss. Finally, I realized as someone who researches the gut microbiome, I already had some answers. So here is my suggestion for healthy weight loss and maintaining overall good health. Ask your gut microbiome. Now, you may be wondering, what is microbiome? 
microbiome is a consortium of trillions of bacteria, virus, fungi, and their associated genes that live inside our gut. In addition, helping us to digest food, microbiome stimulates our immune system, synthesize vitamins, metabolites, enzymes, and other vital nutrients that keep us healthy. Maintaining good gut microbiome is not only important to maintain your ideal healthy weight, but it's equally important for maintaining your overall health. Now, your gut microbiome is very unique to you. It is as unique as you are individual, as your fingerprints. When I immigrated to US a decade ago, I didn't know that along with food, culture, weather, and temperature, I have to adapt to a new gut microbiome. In a scientific study done on hundreds of immigrants, it was shown that migration from a non-Western country to the US is associated with immediate loss of gut microbiome, diversity, and function, which in turn is associated with increased body weight and obesity. Why? Because of the diet, which is highly processed and rich in salt, sugar, and trans fat. Let me tell you how does this work. If you eat healthy food full of fiber, protein, and other essential micronutrients, this will help to improve your gut microbiome diversity and function. And your gut will crave this healthy food. But if you have been living on pizza, burger, and other fast food, your gut is not going to crave healthy foods like spinach or broccoli. Your gut microbiome is going to make you crave the unhealthy processed food. Now, what does this mean if you are habitual of eating canned, highly processed, or fast food? Does that mean your gut microbiome or you are always going to crave this unhealthy processed food? Don't worry, that is good news. You can actually change your gut microbiome. It is possible to replenish your gut microbiome by providing it with healthy whole foods that comes from a farm and not from a factory. It's a mission which is not impossible. And it's your goal, if you choose to accept it, is to develop sustainable habits for healthy nourishment and healthier life. I'm going to share some scientifically proven fact on how to develop a healthier gut microbiome. First, let's start eating some probiotics food to boost the good gut microbiome. How many of you have heard the word probiotics? Probiotics or fermented food have live bacteria in them. Even though the American diet doesn't include lots of fermented food, this kind of food offer powerful support for your overall health. Foods like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, tam, fermented pickles. I, I know, I know, I remember. When I tried this food first time, I swore. I'll never eat it again. But today, I just crave it, thanks to my gut microbiome. Now, live bacteria can also be found in, and for this one, you guys are going to love me. Beer, wine, olives, and cheese. But remember, moderation and portion regulations are the key factor in maintaining the gut microbiome diversity and function. Now, when you start eating this kind of food, initially, there can be a temporary increase in gas and bloating. This is because the bad bacteria are being killed by the newly acquired good microbiome. Now, once we have acquired the new gut microbiome, it's time to keep this newly acquired gut microbiome happy. You do this by feeding them food. Remember, Gut microbiome have microorganisms which are alive, so they need food, just like we do. So how do we feed them? We feed them by eating a specific group of food known as prebiotics. 
Prebiot is a kind of food on which healthy microbes like to munch on. Food like chia seeds, flax seeds, legumes, lentils, peas, chickpeas, whole grains like wheat or oats, fresh vegetables and fruits. Remember, we want our gut microbiome to be diverse. So when we eat diverse prebiotic food, the diversity increases. And to maintain the good gut microbiome and composition, just continue eating prebiotics and probiotics. Ah, now one more thing. When we develop a healthier gut microbiome, it will produce something known as postbiotics. Postbiotics is a byproduct of the fermentation process carried out by the probiotics in the gut. And these post probiotics help you to lower the blood sugar level, stimulate your immune system, reduce the inflammation in the gut, avoid obesity. So now you can see the benefit of adding few new foods to your diet can be incredible. But you may be wondering, how much time does it take to develop a healthier gut microbiome? Technically, it takes six to nine months, but it all depends on how many donuts you had today. <laughs> now, there are two more things other than eating probiotics and prebiotics that can make your gut microbiome healthier. The first one is to reduce your stress level. Scientifically, we have proven that there is a direct correlation of stress to your gut microbiome. And the second one is, wait for it, get more exercise. We have seen research indicating that there is a direct correlation of physical activity with your gut microbiome. Everyone struggles with this, but I want to emphasize that even one minute a day of physical activity and mindfulness exercise can make a huge difference to your overall health. So whether your goal is to have healthy weight loss or better overall energy and health, I hope I have convinced you to stay away from the fat diets and instead make friends with your gut microbiome. It will not only help you to reduce weight, but will also help you to avoid many other diseases. So, maintain your gut microbiome and you too can have long-lasting, healthy and energy life together. Thank you.